what peace, what joy to walk in His amazing grace. This is Pastor Buck Stanley and Pastor Nikki Stanley on this beautiful Labor Day at our home here up in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I want to thank the Lord for our Indian Meadows campground and the beautiful friends that we have up here. You know, sometimes you meet people in life that become so special to you. And I want to thank the Lord for Merlene Cantrell and for Randolph, for James Carrico, for Millette, for Donna and Bruce Hicks, just so many. But, you know, we've had a, a wonderful crowd of people up here on the weekend to celebrate the holidays, and most of them have gone back. Children's going back to school, and it's so peaceful and quiet. And Pastor Nikki and I thought, well, you know what? This will be a good time to bring the good news. That even though sometimes we have to part in this life, that there's going to be a great gathering. And today we're happy to bring you the good news on this Labor Day 2020. And we're just going to go to the Lord in prayer. And we're going to ask God to bless our time together. Have you ever thought how precious time is? And how that we can waste so much time? We can waste so much time about worrying about frivolous things. Worried about fixing things. Worried about what the family's doing. Worried about what the church is doing. We don't stop and smell the roses and say, you know, Jesus said, just love him today and take no thought for tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself. And we know that we have a God that we can look to for every need that we have. And so today, let's open up with prayer Let's take this special time, this special time on this Labor Day in 2020 to rest from our labor, to rest from our worry, to rest from our depression, to rest from our anxiety. And let's just relax. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak that relaxation to you that are watching today. Father God, we come to you right now in Jesus' name. On this beautiful day up on this Blue Ridge Mountain, Lord, for the wonderful, wonderful cool weather, the nice breeze that's coming up through the mountains, we just want to take this time to say thank you. And we want to take this time to pray for our families, for our church, for our friends, for those that we don't know that are suffering today, we ask for your divine guidance in all of our lives. We pray for the Holy Ghost to speak to us, your people, and show us the way. And we pray for those that are lost and undone without God or His Son. Yes. We pray for the lost. We pray for souls today. We just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. And if we can just think upon the good things, you command us not to dwell on these things that are getting us down, but you command us to think upon the good things, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. Oh, God, whatsoever things are of a good report. Mm. Lord, help us to think upon those things that produces good fruit. That produces good results. Yeah. We know that that anger and fear and all of those things never bring good results. But faith in you, Lord Jesus, yeah. always brings good results. So I pray for our time together today. I pray for the message that you've given Pastor Nikki to give us today. I pray, God that that will be anointed with the Holy Ghost and fire. Not with religion. No, no, no. But with the anointing of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let it happen, Lord. There's life in the Word. The good news is that the, 
the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And that's how we fight our battles, Amen. is with the word and not with our, our words. Right now, God, let it happen. Bring us your peace and your joy right now in Jesus' wonderful name. And let everybody say, Amen. Amen. Well, we've got a good song today for you. Uh, Pastor Nikki's going to be on the banjo, and we're just going to sing this beautiful old song that says, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. I want to say to you today that those big arms of Jesus Christ is big enough to hold up the whole world. And don't you think that he can't do it because all things are possible with God. Amen. So let's sing it. What do you say, Pastor Nicky? Yes. Praise the Lord. Oh, what a wonderful day. What a wonderful day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together and praise our God. What do you say? sooner or later that's right you know i've i've leaned on people yes and sometimes it works sometimes it don't but praise god when you lean on jesus 
Amen. He'll never let you down. He'll never fail you. Never. He will never, 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 never. leave you holding a bag. <laughs> but he'll be right there with you. Yes. Right to the end of the world. He said, I'm not going to leave you or forsake you. That's what he said. Now, Pastor Nikki, you've got a word for us today. Yes. And so I'm going to get myself here out of the way. And let's, let's have the good news today. Okay. Oh, Mwah. thank you, my love. This is our 26th Labor Day anniversary. Buck and I have been together almost 20, going on 26 years now. We praise the Lord. No, it's 26 plus, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, I'd like to read you the scripture where those words came from, leaning on the everlasting arms. Moses was giving the Israelites a goodbye, and he, was, he told them this. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, or Israel, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Beloved, those of us that believe in the Lord are part of Israel, part of Jeshurun, because we're believing in the Messiah, the salvation of the Lord. Let's remind ourselves that those everlasting arms are under us every minute of every day. Amen. He is carrying us yes. because he loves us. He never expected us to live our lives alone apart from him. And we can have such a, a wonderful, special life if we'll just remember that Jesus walks with us. By his spirit, he is in us. We're one with him, and we can commune with him. I've been communing with him since I woke up this morning, and I was doing dishes, and I said, Lord, I'd rather be writing thank you notes or working on the newsletter or reading the word, but I have dishes to do. And he reminded me that I can have sweet communion with him even when I'm doing dishes. Dishes are just part of living this life here on earth. And so as Brother Andrew also did, he communed with the Lord. He practiced, he called it practicing the presence of the Lord Jesus. And you know what? There is nothing like that than to be able to talk with, walk with the creator of the universe, the lover of our souls, the one who's coming for us, yes. the one who delights in us, the one who's going to dance over us at the wedding feast. Wow, it's just, it is so wonderful to be a part of the Lord Jesus' life. And that is, as Buck was saying, leaning on the Lord, that's where true life is. Yes. There's nothing like it. The Lord wants us to walk with him and talk with him and trust in him, rely on him, talk to him about everything, and listen and then obey. To me, it's called walking in the spirit of God, and there's nothing like it. You know, if you're lying in bed, helpless, you can't do anything, you can still have that sweet communion with the Lord and yes. hear him speak to your heart. And I know he'll be speaking words of comfort and words of love and endearment. So, beloved, there's no, no treasure, nothing on this earth that's better than walking and talking with the Lord. And what I want to talk about today is that when we face our fears with the Lord Jesus, they no longer become fearful. Amen. Because when we see who God is, the creator who just spoke everything into being. And if you've read the word in the Old Testament and you see where God traveled with the Israelites uh, from Egypt, across the Red Sea and into the desert, provided water and manna. And then when the Israelites started fighting, when they got to Canaan land, the Lord was with them in every battle that they had to endure in order to take the land that he had given them. And he fought their battles for them. 
And today, if you're in a battle of some kind, look to the Lord. He is there to fight your battle for you. I remember years ago when I had had a dream and I had three fears and they terrified me. I dreamed that I'd end up in prison. And that was an awful thing. Another one was I'd end up in a mental ward the rest of my life, babbling away, not knowing who I was, where I was, not knowing anything, not knowing about God. And the third one was that I might be buried alive. Can you imagine what kind of dream was that? But you know, they were very real fears that probably came into my mind through movies or reading or or experiences that other people had had and I had heard about them. But as I faced each and every fear with the Lord Jesus, each time he said, wouldn't I be there with you? Amen. And I said, well, yes, you would. You said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. You said you'd be with me. And so in prison, wouldn't he be there with you? Yes, he would. And he could use you in prison for his glory, for being a prayer warrior, for telling others the salvation message. If you were in a mental ward like I feared, he would be there with you. He was there with me. I experienced being in a mental ward, and he was there. And I had opportunities to share with others as I came back to my right mind in yeah. that mental ward. I was able to share with others the gospel message, that there was nothing in me but Jesus and his love and his grace and his mercy had rescued me. And I learned that I had nothing to fear about a mental ward, that God could use me there just as well as he could use me in my, uh, out, out here somewhere in my right mind. And he did. And if I were buried alive, I know I'd be with the Lord forever and ever and ever because Jesus died on that cross for me. He died on that cross for you to forgive you of your sin, that you might have eternal life, that you could be forgiven and walk with him every day on this earth and then be with him forever in eternity. There is nothing to fear, beloved. And I'd like to read to you from Psalm 91. Amen. He, that's you or me, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. Ooh, he's covering us. He's watching out for us. He, he's fighting our enemies on either side, spiritual enemies. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. As Pastor Buck was saying, if we lean on someone else, that someone else will fail us, but not Jesus. Let's trust him. Surely he shall deliver thee from the yes. snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Well, we're going through a pestilence right now, aren't we? He's going to deliver us from that. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. That word habitation, place to live, live in Christ. Yes, amen. Jesus said, unless you abide in me, unless you live in me, unless you stay attached to me, you can do no good thing that will count for eternity. I want to just live in him, be covered by him, protected by him, yes. and used of him yes. to bring glory to his name and to bring the gospel message to a dying world. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, 
for he shall give his angels charge over thee yeah. to keep thee in all thy ways. Can you imagine the number of angels that surround us sometimes, protecting us, fighting a spiritual battle in the heavenlies for us, God's children? They should, the angels shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Remember all the lions that David killed? And my husband has put his foot on a lot of adders, I'll tell you. Because he hath set his love upon me. Have you set your love upon the Lord Jesus? Have you set your love upon Father God? Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, God says. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. <laughs> oh, what joy, what joy to know the Lord loves us and cares for us, paid the price for us to come home. Won't you ask the Lord Jesus into your heart today? Yes. Won't you set your heart upon him? Yes. Won't you tell him, I love you, Jesus. I thank you for what you've done in my life. I'm going to lean hard on you. I'm going to hide myself in you. And Lord, I ask you to use me to glorify your name. I can't wait to be home with you. And yet I'm here with you spiritually, Jesus. Thank you that I can walk with you and talk with you and listen to your voice. Thank you that you lead me in the way I should go. I pray for all those that are listening that they'll do the same, that they'll learn that there is nothing that matters in this world except a relationship with you, Lord Jesus, and that we'll be together as one family in God the Father one day. Thank you, Jesus, for paving the way home. Pastor Buck. Would you close this? We have a song we want to sing. I want to know more about my Lord. You know, the more we know about him, <laughs> the more we know about him, the safer we feel, the more assurance we have. Amen. 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 What a good word. What a good word. I would challenge you right now. I would challenge you to ask you if you are a truly born-again Christian, are you living a religious life or are you living a life for Jesus? And you know there's quite a difference because religion gives you rules and regulations. And Jesus said, I've come to set you free. Does that give us freedom to sin? Absolutely not. But we have a freedom. We have a freedom that religious people don't understand. And it I'm asking you today, you know, I don't know whether I'll be around Labor Day 2021, but I do know I'm here today, Labor Day 2020, and I have dedicated not only my life, but everything about me, I've dedicated it to the Lord, and God wants you to do the same thing. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I beg you today, listen. You don't know whether you'll see another Labor Day. It's so important to have that relationship with Jesus to where you don't worry about it. You just take each day and live it to the fullest for Jesus Christ. So I'm saying to you today, right now, right now, sinner, would you come? Would you come or would you bow your heart down to Jesus and would you repent of your sins and turn from your sins and turn to Jesus? Yeah. Be willing to follow Him. I'm telling you, it's not easy sometimes. And, you know, there'll be people that, that you love that will hurt you so bad. But God is always there to comfort His people. Amen. And that's what's important. And I want to say to you, if you're a truly born-again Christian, 
Are you living a life for Jesus? Or are you living a life for yourself? Mm -mm. What is your mind? No, where is your heart? Yes. It's time for us all. I'm pointing to me. See that thumb? <laughs> Let's get back to our first love where it's exciting yes. to be a Christian. Amen. It's exciting to have Jesus' forgiveness. And as we close today, be smart, be safe, take care of yourself, and trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Amen. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will direct your path. Amen. This is Pastor Buck Stanley and Pastor Nikki Stanley saying, God loves you and we love you. As we close with this song, this real old song that says, I want to know more about my Lord.
Bye, Snow.